keep picking me for a random locker search? Meet my underwear. Many years ago, I worked for an outdoor activity center slash playland in the retail department. Throughout the park there were many different shops that we manned and I absolutely loved working there despite it being hard work for little pay. One day I had a run in with a manager who seriously berated me in front of the entire team along with others from different departments. I was advised by a manager from a different team to make a formal complaint which I did. Others came out with similar complaints and said manager was advised to find employment elsewhere but not sacked. Now, unbeknownst to me, I triggered the chain of events that would lead to me leaving the company. Now before the main story there's some background info that is relevant to my malicious compliance. There were a few rules in place that were designed to prevent theft including no more than £10 to be allowed on the shop floor which was to be checked before your shift. Anything over this must be declared to management and left in your locker and all staff had to agree to random locker slash pocket searches. In the two years I'd worked here had never been picked for a random search. There were around several hundred employees so the odds were incredibly slim. As soon as our disgraced manager left, I suddenly found myself picked at random for a search. This involved turning out my pockets, removing my shoes slash socks and then being escorted to the locker room to empty the contents out. Nothing was found so I was sent back to the shop floor. The following week I was again picked at random for a search which again turned up nothing. Rumors were soon doing the rounds that I had upset my department's remaining management team after instigating the action against my former manager and they were going to force me out using any means necessary. I realized that I needed to act so started job hunting and then began my my malicious compliance. I started taking a backpack to work filled with £20 in pennies. Every morning I declared the amount in my locker as required and sure enough after a couple of days I was once again selected for my weekly random search. I got paid to watch a security guard and supervisor count 2,000 pennies. As expected, I passed said search and off, I went. This happened a second time with now £30 in pennies and I decided to up my game. At the start of the following week, I patiently awaited my random search with glee knowing what awaited them. The day soon arrived and off I was marched to the lockers ready for their treat. I lift out my backpack and pass it to the security guard and supervisor who dive straight in without any gloves. Oh, how they wretched as they discovered what was in there. I had several pairs of my period soaked pants waiting in there especially for them. They were gingerly laid on the floor beside my bag as they counted my bag of pennies. The smell from the pants was unreal, they'd been festering in there for days in anticipation. Once again the search revealed nothing and off to work I went. After that I was not picked for another search again. I left after a couple more weeks to a new job and keeping in touch with some people I discovered that new rule was introduced that tried dictating what you could and couldn't take to work with you. This soon led to a mass walk out of staff and after a year the place shut down due to unrelated matters. Now to the comments. This is very very malicious and I don't feel a single shred of compassion for your former workplace. Whistleblowers need to be protected. End of. This was retaliation and you can and should report it. Piggybacking the last comment. There is specific law in the UK in regards to this concerning unfair and constructive dismissal. The ethical, equitable and lawful treatment of whistleblowers and the practical situation are unfortunately two different things. I guess they weren't expecting to be a participant in a period drama. There will be blood. I drink your milkshake. I drink it up. When I used to work at an amusement park the games people had a rule. Their uniform shorts didn't even have pockets to prevent them from stealing. I used to be the security guard that did these checks at an amusement park. At hours, you had to declare any money in your locker, but it also was locked so no one could get into it without the combo slash master key. Though if I was having to count out $20 slash $30 in pennies, I would have complained to my boss about the debts management after the second time once it was clear this was targeting. I had better shit to do than participate in someone's power struggles. I had a similar thing happen to me. I complained about a safety issue at one of our monthly meetings when the corporate safety coordinator was present. He later pulled me off the floor and questioned me about the safety issue. It had been a problem the entire time I had worked there. 
At that point three years, our operations manager didn't want to shell out several thousand dollars from the maintenance budget to fix the issue because spending it affected his yearly bonus. The corporate guy went around to all the machine operators and asked them if they had any safety issues with their machines. He then forced the plant to fix the issues. Every. Single. One. It cost over 40 grand. After that I was picked for a random drug test every two weeks for the next six months straight. I loved it. I got paid to sit in an air-conditioned office while I drank ice cold water till I had to pee. You see, it could get over 100 degrees in the plant and the only air conditioning was in the manager's offices. I was constantly dehydrated by the time they would pull me to do the test so it took anywhere from half an hour to an hour before I could go. The human resources manager was a friend of mine and she was required to sit with me while I waited. My wife worked for the company that conducted our drug testing and I already knew the lady that conducted the test at our facility. So, every two weeks us three got to hang out and catch up while I cooled off. The HR our manager kept telling them that I was never going to fail the test. She thought it was hilarious that they were paying me to hang out while my supervisor had to do my job. Eventually they gave up. The only drawback to this sort of situation is that false positives are a thing, and frequent testing increases the chance of this. I don't know if it's protocol to retest a positive sample or not, but I suspect not. So even though I've never tried any drugs in my life I still don't like the tests. Actually, if it tested positive on site, they had to send the sample out to be retested, with a more through type of test, at an actual lab before they could fire me. And false positives can be contested. False negatives are actually three times more common than false positives. You would have had grounds for constructive dismissal if you'd put a claim in within six months of leaving and before they shut down. England has that law too? Yep. I was picked for the totally random drug test every quarter in the army. I didn't do drugs, but the couple of guys that did, and everyone knew, never got picked for the random test. That fact annoyed me more than it should have when I was in the military. I was, and still am, someone that is regarded as trusted, organized, and maybe even a goody two shoes. It wasn't a drug test, but a locker check. They thought that they'll check mine because it's always so well organized. Well that check was after a particularly demanding march and no one of us had unpacked their bag yet. Guess who got assigned weekend duty? This both malicious and brilliant. Kudos to you for fighting the system. This is a bloody funny story. Period. Removing your socks is strip search in the UK, it's illegal for them to even ask this, let alone require it. Can you explain more on why you can't have cash on you at all? This part confused me. I worked retail for a long time and never encountered anything resembling this. Probably for reasons of plausible deniability. Imagine that someone's register was down by, say, 30 quid. If they happen to have 35 pounds on them then that could be perceived as proof, albeit circumstantial. By disallowing cash to be held on person, this means that any low count of a cash draw is now harder to prove as theft and instead will be interpreted as error. Source, I manage a team now but am office based. Never managed a team when I worked retail and that was 20 years ago. Yikes. I mean I get it, but man this says we have trust issues with the employees we've hired and then clearly have done a poor job of managing loss in the past. Red flag. Beautifully done. If the constructive dismissal avenue had ever been sought, it would have been funny seeing the log for randomized searches and seeing your name come up 100,000% more than it statistically should, after you made the initial complaint. That's so gross, I love it. One retail employer I worked for had a look at your bag in and out policy. Everything. So for three weeks, I took my fully loaded IT bag. Due to part of the new policy, every moment they were checking your bag, you were permitted to be on the clock. I ended up earning almost 10 hours pay, all of it overtime, before they called me in for an HR meeting. Two hours later, they amended the policy to be random checks and I'm the new in-house loss prevention guy.
One job I had there was a clause in the contract that they could check your lunchbox when leaving. One supervisor was a bit of a dick, and actually do it fairly often. One day he decided to check lunchboxes. Mine was empty and he asked me to open it. I tossed it to him, and said it was empty. He tossed it back and said open it. It was an aluminium box, I let it hit the ground, and stomped it flat, and sailed it like a frisbee into the corner, and walked away. The next day I went to work with another lunchbox, identical to the first one. I told him I had plenty of them. He stopped with the lunchbox inspections. But that was not the end of it. Someone fished the smashed box out of the trash, and hung it over the supervisor's desk. Every time he came in it would be hanging there. This went on for several months until it finally disappeared.